You have give all to all. You know, we sometimes see it in children, you know, where the children are going and you give them candy and they, they give it away. They're just, you ever see little children sometimes, they're so giving, they're not concerned at all about things. They're just like, oh, what an example. To have, give all to all. And this has been something that's been really important to me because I remember Jesus taught, freely you have received, now freely give. And that means you have to really unlearn a lot of reciprocity, scarcity, lack. If you believe in any of those, uh, you're not going to be into freely I receive, freely I shall give. There's going to be a part against you in your mind that's going, be careful. Don't be too giving. You're going to pay for this. You're going to be really sorry for being so free with your giving. But Jesus was never sorry. He, he gave, and he does tell us later on, uh, if you remember the ten characteristics of a teacher of God in the Manual for Teachers, but I think it's number seven, generosity. He says, Look, really true giving is the exact opposite of what giving is in this world. Exact opposite. That's pretty radical for him to say exact opposite. Because I think most of us, when we think of generosity, a lot of us can think of like philanthropists who give a lot of money. The Carnegies, the Ted Turners, you know, we have, there's a lot of people that are really, they seem to have a lot of wealth, accumulated wealth, and they give it away. And Jesus says, true generosity is the exact opposite of that, of what generosity seems to be in the world. So what he's calling us to, he's saying, listen, ideas are strengthened as they're given away. They give more to the giver and to the receiver. There's no loss involved in sharing true ideas. And that's why everyone's given a teaching function, to share true ideas. And really, it's not you who do it. So it's not, you don't have to be concerned and say, well, I'm not a very good speaker, and I'm, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'll say the right words. And, you know, you could see in these beautiful round tables, you could speak from your heart. That's the very beginning stages of learning to, to clear away the darkness and let those true ideas pour through you. And let them be strengthened in your awareness. Now that's generosity. If Jesus tells me that the only function the body has is to let the voice for God speak through it, I'm going to take that very, very sincerely. In fact, if you look at the parable of David, I was into, I was into Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, I camped out in places like this, I, I skied, I played tennis, basketball, baseball, I did all kinds of things with this body. And then, in my late twenties, when I, I gave myself over to Jesus and the Course in a very, you might say, uncompromising, radical way, He said, listen, I want to let my voice speak through it. And that's just a, a metaphor for your purification of your consciousness. Don't think that there isn't anything special about being a voice pe piece for the Holy Spirit. It's just, this is how the backdrop will look for your transformation of consciousness, and it will look different for other people. Some will sing through the body, some will laugh through the body, some will hug through the body. I like all of those, <laughs> all of the above. It gives you an opportunity to just let the love flow through you in an involuntary way, where you're not still trying to consciously decide where the miracles should be bestowed. Jesus says, I'll go before you and I'll tell you which miracles to perform.